Hello, this is Chris Menard. Today I'm going to do a couple features in pivot tables. So I have a list of clients starting row 8 the header row. If I scroll down just to show you the data, it stops in row 43. If you would, take a look at the states in column E. I've got some states in the south and some states over in the west. Before I make a pivot table, this is something I always do, and I cover this in my online Excel training, which is now available. A control in the letter T on the keyboard will pick up your entire data range and turn it into a table. Click OK. If you don't know how to use filters, those are the arrows in row 8. Don't worry about it. Don't even worry about the different border colors. Go to the Insert tab pivot table. We'll put it on a new worksheet to keep this easy. Click OK. I'm going to check state, which I just showed you, and I'm going to check purchases to date. So there is the total purchases to date by state. I'm going to double click B3, because I just want to make the numbers look better. I'm going to use currency and zero decimals. And now it's currency with zero decimals. And I'm going to change that to some purchases to date. So here I go. Here's what grouping is, manual grouping in PowerPoint. I'm going to select California. I'm going to hold down the control key on the keyboard. Montana, Washington, pivot table tools analyze. If you have, I believe, Excel 2010, instead of Analyze and Design, you may have a third tab up here, but I promise you, you can still do the grouping. Group Selection, and it called it Group 1. I'm going to click on Group 1 and type in West. That's the West region. Now I'm going to select, select Georgia, Control, North Carolina. Oops, do it again. Georgia. North Carolina, South Carolina, Texas. Let go of control. Group. I've got group two. Let's call that South. You don't have to do this next step, but I'm going to go to the Design tab because it goes Washington, then South. I'm going to put a blank row between them. If you don't like that, just turn it off. Now, let me show you this. This is pretty cool. By the way, my subtotals are showing at the top. I'm going to put them at the bottom. It's just a matter of preference. It's up to you where you show your subtotals, top or bottom. Now, if I add to California, notice California is 2,969. I'm going to come back here. An advantage of a table is when I'm typing in more data, We don't care about cities, so I'm going to just... California is 2969. Click back in here. Analyze, refresh, 7969. So it automatically updates. That's one of the reasons I make my data range a table. Now, watch this one. So now I'm going to add a state we don't have. Let's put in Tennessee. Come back here, same steps, analyze, refresh. Now, a lot of people will tell you you can't add Tennessee back to the south. That's not true. I'm going to just simply select these, control key, Select Tennessee. Notice it says South in A10. Group selection. Because I did it again, you just simply have to rename it. That is all. No big deal, but it did add it to the South. Also, when you do this manual grouping, it puts it over here as one of your fields. It's right here, State 2. So if you want to turn it off, just lose it, and you're back here. 
pull it back, and it's back. Now, the last thing I want to cover with you is other reasons to use this grouping. I did it for states. Take a look now at column F. I, may, I could make, if I had a pivot table, Facebook, Google Ads, and LinkedIn, I might call those the group social media. And then all the other advertising sources, radio, TV, I might just make it other. Products, uh, women's shoes and men's shoes, I could either name them shoes or name it clothing. The trash bags and the knives, I might make kitchen. And TVs and headphones, I may call electronics. So there's plenty of reason to do manual grouping in a pivot table. Feel free to call me for instructor-led training, or you can sign up for my online Excel training classes. Thank you.